Now the last one. This last tip might hurt. So your hair isn't growing. In this video, I'm going to share with you six things you can do to help you start making your hair grow faster again. As you can see, I am wearing a wig, but this is what my hair looks like. As you saw, my hair is doing really, really well. It is in a protective style right now. I have had these braids in for just over a week. This is the first time I'm doing a wig, so let's get into it. By the way, if you do want a review on this hair or how I install my wig or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to do a video like that for you. I bought this hair with my own money. So if that seems interesting, then just let me know. Anyway, if you want to come back and you don't know me, my name is Angelica. I post videos twice a week, every single week on Wednesdays and Sundays, all about growing healthy natural hair. So if that seems like your thing, consider subscribing. The subscription button is right down there as well as the bell icon. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications every single time I post. And if you wanna see how I did my makeup or anything else to do with makeup, go to my Instagram. It is here at AngieB with three underscores. Let's get into the video. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you my exact steps. No beating around the bush, no hiding anything. Exact steps for how you can grow your hair faster, longer, and stronger in 2021. This is the year we need to level up. It doesn't matter what is happening. A lot of crazy things are happening that are out of, out of our control. So we have to take some of that control back, do some things that make you feel good. And growing hair is actually something that makes a lot of people feel good. And this is going to be in the form of some sort of like three month challenge. You don't have to do it for three months, but I would highly advise you to do this for a straight three months because usually when you're consistent for about three months that's a good period where you start to see massive change in your hair so the first thing the first thing you need to do before you do anything else is to get an accurate idea of how long your hair is now i do not personally like measuring tapes you can use a measuring tape if you want if you want to see how long your hair is and if you want to track your progress over a couple months and see how your hair has grown and all that you can go ahead and use a measuring tape i will not stop you I will not be using a measuring tape. I do not like to use measuring tapes. I get too crazy and OCD about the numbers, so I do not like to do that. If you're like that, please don't do that. What I would advise you to do is wear your hair in the state that you wear it in the most, whether it is in a high puff, whether it is down, even if it's in braids, if you wear your hair in braids all the time, fine. Wear your hair the way you wear it the most. Take pictures. Take pictures from the front, pictures from the side, pictures from the back. And then also, you can just stretch your hair. Like in a t-shirt like this, this is like a, a guest t-shirt. It does have a sign on it. So I would advise you to just pull a strand of hair from multiple parts. Like if it's from the front like this, pull a strand like this and see where it reaches. You can just be like, okay, it reaches there about this part, there's quite a bit of space. And maybe the next time you measure your hair like this after three months, it will be like at the guest sign and you'll be like, okay, that's quite a distance. Then you can do a piece from the back so you can pull it down and measure and see, okay, that reaches there. Next time you pull it, it's gonna be at a different length. I find that so much better compared to just, um, you know, using an actual measuring tape because you'll be like, what, I only gained like half an inch. And sometimes you get so fixated on the numbers and noticing like looking at the length is way better than what it sounds like. I only gained one inch, but then looking at it, it might actually be a lot. So get an accurate idea of how long your hair is first. And then for the second point, this one is a double-edged sword, if you will. If you have severe breakage, severe damage, Maybe you have color that you want to get rid of or something like that. I would suggest you cut it off and get rid of it before you even start doing this whole three month thing. And the reason is you might end up cutting more because damage usually goes up. If you have split ends that are severe, like a big gap, like a big dip in your hair and you start to see that it's only going up. Even if your hair is growing and doing well the next couple months, you're still going to have to cut it off and it's going to feel like a waste. So I'd rather you do it now. If you only cut your hair when it's straight or in a blow dried state or just a specific way like I do, I only cut my hair when it is straightened so that it's nice and even. If you do it like that and you only have like, you know, a couple split ends, your hair looks fine. It just looks like it could lead, need like a little baby trim or something. Then you can leave it. It's fine. You can deal with it at the end of the challenge. But if you do have some severe damage heat damage whatever that you need to get rid of do it before the challenge starts and you will see much better results now on the other hand if your hair is perfectly fine and you have no reason to cut it please do not cut before the challenge because you're just cutting healthy hair there's absolutely no need for you to do that so now let's get into actually what we are going to be doing 
So for the things we'll actually do to grow our hair, the first thing I would say is to protective style semi long term, at least three times within the three months. So it could be cornrows, it could be, you could change them too. You don't have to do the same protective style, but it has to be a protective style, not a protective style. Like it looks like it's protecting your hair, but it's damaging. No, I'm not talking about micro braids, no little twists, no tiny cornrows, no, nothing that causes any excess like pulling or tugging or anything like that on your hair. Try and use something that, try and do something that is pretty loose, something that doesn't cause any damage, something that will allow you to not comb your hair too often, something that will not pull on your edges. And the best things I can rec and the best things I can recommend are cornrows, like what's under this wig right now. I'll show a picture. That is what my hair is looking like right now under this wig. I just have about six or eight. I think I have about eight cornrows in my head and the ends are not braided all the way till the end. They are nice and loose and they are not too tight as well. I did not feel pain even on the first day when I did my braids. I'll also be doing just chunky braids, you know, where I just put like six or eight big like Felicia braids in my hair. You can do the same thing with big twists and just go out in a head wrap or whatever. But I would suggest the minimum time you should keep your protective style is in is two weeks. So when you keep that in for two weeks, that means you will not be manipulating your hair for two weeks. You will not be combing it for two weeks. You will not have to deal with it. The only thing you have to be doing is like adding some moisture, doing scalp massages and all that, that I'll get into in a second. But yes, that is all you need to do. Do a minimum of two weeks and a maximum of six weeks. I would recommend not going above that because that can also cause damage. I will be doing my protective styles anywhere from two weeks to five weeks. So cornrows, I usually leave them in for five weeks. And then twists and braids, I usually leave them in for two weeks so that I can allow for a nice wash and rebraid and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that is clear. Let's get on to the next thing that we'll be doing to grow our hair long, healthy, and strong. So the next thing we'll be doing is extreme care for your hair while it is in those protective styles. Now, I know that it is very easy to actually forget about your hair when it is in those protective styles because you're like, my hair's away, I can't see it. Especially if you wear wigs like this, you'll be like, oh, my wig looks so nice today. And you just be tending to your wig and you forget that you actually have hair underneath. Do not forget, you should scalp your hair a minimum of twice a week. You should do scalp massages also a minimum of twice a of twice a week but you can massage your scalp every single day provided you do it well there's a video in the link there you can check out on exactly how to massage your hair in braids or twists or anything like that and then you will be washing your hair every one to two weeks depending on the protective style that you're in this is care specifically for in your protective style when i'm in cornrows i do wash my hair i do wash my hair every week but when i'm in big braids or twists sometimes i'll go and stretch it till like 10 days before i wash my hair so you'll find a way that works for you and i will link another video there for how i care for my hair in protective styles and maybe that can help you a little bit more on what to do with your hair while it's in an, while it is in the protective style so let's get to the next one so the next thing is please do a treatment to your hair every single two weeks when you have access to it. If your hair is in cornrows, then you can skip the treatment until the day when you take your braids out. But if your hair is in twists or braids, you can go ahead and do the treatment even in those. So the treatment, it is completely up to you because different things work for different people. I will just make some suggestions and tell you exactly what treatments I will be doing, but you can do whatever you want. So I will be doing personally a hot oil treatment. I will alternate like one week I'll do like after two weeks, I'll do a hot oil treatment. The next two weeks, I'll go ahead and do my favorite Yao Women Rice Water. And if you don't know how to make that, at the end of this video, I'll link my rice water playlist so you can check that out. I will be using the Yao Women's version of the rice water every two weeks on my hair. Oh, let me say once a month because the other time of the month I will use a hot oil treatment, but I will use them interchangeably. Like if I decide I don't want to do another hot oil treatment, I'll go ahead and use rice water again only every two weeks. Now you can go ahead and try an avocado mask. You can do aloe vera. The treatment also doesn't have to be strictly DIY. It can be an intense protein treatment. It can be an intense deep conditioning mask, anything like that. It should just be an intense treatment. Don't be stuck up on, it has to be rice water. It has to be a natural thing. Just do something that makes your hair feel amazing and extremely like nourished, like what your hair actually needs. 
that's what you should do every two weeks let's get into the next thing we will be doing and this is deep conditioning now i would not tell you again exactly what deep conditioner to use because you know we don't have money to be going out and buying a whole bunch of new things use the deep conditioner that works best for you but i will tell you what i will be using just in case maybe you're out of deep conditioner and you want to use what i'm using or you're just interested to know i will either be using the shea moisture manuka honey and mafura oil deep conditioner or i'll be using the eden body works split and repair mask i will use those interchangeably it would just depend i also have the maui moisture agave and argan oil deep conditioning mask so i will use any one of those three just whatever my hair feels like and you want to use a deep conditioner every single time you wash your hair so if you wash your hair every two weeks if you wash your hair once a month if you wash your hair once a week whenever you wash your hair do a deep conditioner if you decide to do exactly what I'm telling you, but you don't want your protective style and you just want to wear your hair how you always wear it, at least still do this. Deep condition your hair every single time you wash it. Now the last one. This last tip might hurt, but it's necessary, okay? It is necessary. If you are someone who heat styles your hair often, or maybe not so often, but you still use heat on your hair for the next three months, let's commit to not use any direct heat. Now I'm specifically saying direct heat because for all my low porosity girls out there, you know that we need additional heat to let deep conditioners and other treatments like rice water penetrate into our hair shaft. That is not the heat I'm talking about. You can go under a steamer, you can put a cap on and go under a hooded dryer so that it can create some steam, warms up your hair, opens the cuticle and allows for the products to absorb. I actually recommend that. What I'm talking about is direct heat, no blow dry, no flat iron, no roller sets, no hot comb, no direct heat on your hair for three months. If you use heat every day, every week, every month, just just try, just hold it together just for three months and actually doing protective styles like the braids. Occasionally when you feel like, oh, I really wanna have straight hair, I really wanna have blown out hair, you can throw on a wig and just get that feeling that you have when you straighten your hair. And it might actually really help you, you know, get through that little bug, like I really need straight hair, because you will get the look, you have straight hair. Sure, if it's not the same texture as your hair, maybe you won't get the feeling of the same texture of your own straight hair, but it will get you by. If you're serious about growing your hair longer, healthy and stronger, I would suggest that you use these kinds of protective styles. But I will say, if you're doing this to grow your hair, don't wear wigs every day because the glue and the whole, everything about it will just add to a little bit of damage on your hair. So occasionally do things like this, but don't do it every day. So if you want to all like, you know, track your progress, let's do this together. Let's do it for three months. You can be commenting, come back to this video. You can save this video, share it, come back every couple of weeks, two weeks, every couple of days and be like, Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Have you managed to stay without going? Have you managed to stay this long without using any heat? What are you doing? We can all share our insights and after three months we can make another video. I'll talk about all the feedback. You can send me feedback on my Instagram. It is Angie B with three underscores. I know I do mostly post like makeup videos and stuff, but my DMs are open to you guys. You can let me know how your challenge is going. If you're having any challenges, I can help you. We'll come back after three months and I'll make a new video showing some of your progress. We can talk about how our hair has grown what we're doing differently, and I'm sure we're all going to enjoy this little time that we're just tending, adding some extra care and love into our hair. I hope you guys are safe and taking care of yourselves. Hit my face right there if you didn't subscribe in the beginning, hit my face right here. To subscribe to my other channel, watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here. If you'd like to see any of my older videos, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!